With great power comes great responsibility. My content existed because I tried my very hardest to be an absolute not a realist, especially with uncomfortable truths. Mm. I was pointing out that very uncomfortable truth. Is that a truth? It's an uncomfortable truth in many parts of the world. It's not a truth that I'm happy about. I don't want to be seen as a negative influence in the world. I know that there's a whole bunch of men. I get thousands of emails a week from men whose lives I've saved. I get thousands of emails a week from men who are on the verge of suicide and I've saved their lives. I believe in protecting and providing. I've been misunderstood. I don't want anybody to be offended by anything I say. I want to be a positive force in the world. I don't want anybody to hear what I say and make them feel bad about themselves. Mm. I want all people to live righteous and good, whether they're male or female. I think righteous is living true to your heart and knowing that you're doing good by people, not snaking anybody, not lying to anybody. I know I live a very righteous life. The government is not capable of helping the poor. And this is why it's so important as a person, you take personal responsibility and understand you're living in a world where the matrix can be cracked. You can make a bunch of money, but you need to take responsibility and do it. I refuse to accept that there are people out there who cannot become happy, contented individuals. I refuse to accept we live in a world where God is creating people who no matter how hard they work and how good their life becomes, can't be happy. I don't accept that. I accept that the universe is a very giving place and that God loves all of us. And if you try your best and you work hard, you can become a better person. I'm telling the younger generation that if they don't get up and work hard and make sure that they're important, that the world's not gonna give a about them. 99% of my content was aimed at men telling them the truth, saying that as a man, you're born with no inherent value. You have to become important. You have to go through some pain or go through some suffering to make people care about you. Otherwise, you're not going to matter. As a dude, if you walk into the party and you put no effort into your life, nobody get, nobody about you. And every man out here knows. And one of the great things about the masculine journey and masculinity is that we've all lived a semi-similar story. It's kind of cool. Like we've all been the teenager gets heartbroken. We've all been unimportant. We've all like worked hard and then start to get some clout. And then we've all kind of lived the same kind of journey. So I say to everybody out there, yeah, if you don't follow that path and follow that journey and in one way or another get to the top, whether it's fighting, whether it's comedy, whether it's musician, whatever it is, if you're just going to stay somewhere near the bottom and then at the age of 44, you know, email me saying I'm depressed. Blah, blah, blah. Well, of course you're depressed. Loser. Yeah. But that was your choice mm -hmm. because you, you have to build yourself as a man. And if you decide not to build yourself, then, then your life's going to suck. My main message is to resist the slave mind, uh, to understand that every single thing you're being told has an agenda behind it where you wouldn't be told it otherwise, to examine every strongly held belief you have and try and identify where it comes from and why you have it. I sit and argue with people, I discuss things with people, and they so fervently believe a point. And I say, why do you believe that so much? Like, do you have personal experience? No, but I saw the news. The news told you X, and now you are desperate. You will sit here for hours arguing that point. A lot of people are completely empty vessels ready to be programmed. And I try and tell people, listen, to just stop for a second and, and understand that the things they're telling you to believe are not necessarily for your benefit. The people who make the rules don't make the rules for the benefit of everybody. They make the rules for the benefit of the people who make the rules of the game. So um, telling people to resist a slave mind and just be critically critical thinkers, keep their brain open, pay attention to things, be perspicacious, that's the general theme and it doesn't matter whether you're left, right, liberal, man, woman, etc. It's just think for yourself. That's the general message. I believe men and women are a beautiful union. I think we're slightly different, but when we work together, we're the most powerful force in the world. And I certainly believe that men and women, when they work together, is the most beautiful force on the planet. I thought, of course I believe in men and women. Of course I believe in love. Of course I believe in marriage. Of course I believe in family. Okay. I believe in marriage in the traditional sense. I believe a man has a duty to stand up and be a real man. I believe that the problem with the world today that we are facing is that not enough men are sticking to the age old ways of masculinity. Mm -hmm. I believe that me standing up and saying a man must protect a woman and provide for her. So he needs to make sure that she's safe. He needs a degree of authority. I believe women are sovereign individuals and they can make any choice they so desire. I think that it's important that we remember that a man has a duty. I think I certainly in my relationship have a financial responsibility to provide for my woman. My woman would never have to work unless she wanted to do because I'm the kind of person who works hard enough. And I'll make another point that needs to be said. The number of women who have stood up and stuck up for me is ignored. Thousands of women are making videos saying, I've met Andrew Tate, he's such a nice guy. I wish I had a man like Andrew Tate who felt responsible to protect and provide for me. You know what? I, I do belong to my husband. That's why I married him and I love him. We ignore the thousands of women who stood up and, and, and stood by me and said everything I said is true. This is that there's a large contingent of men who still want to make money, go to the gym, be strong, drive a fast car, be traditionally masculine, and don't want to be shamed for that. And I believe that feeling depressed is real. I don't believe depression as a clinical disease is real. I think PTSD is very real. I've, unfortunately, I have some friends who suffer from that. Mm. I know that feeling depressed is real. 
I believe that the number one power you have against these things are taking, trying to take control of your own mind and affecting your own life. I believe that it's not healthy to hand over all your power and believe that depression is an outside disease that you can't affect. I know that when I've had difficult periods in my life and also many of my friends, like I've said, suffer from PTSD and been through terrible things. I've lived a very difficult life and I know people who have that the things that made them feel better is when they woke up and said, you know what, I'm not going to allow this to damage me anymore. I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going to get up and I'm going to fight this as hard as right, I can. If someone comes to me and says, I'm clinically depressed or I feel very, very sad, I would say the first thing you need to do is stop accepting the identity of a clinically depressed person. Stop accepting you have no control over this. And what you need to do is stop identifying that way and let's work together to try and fight against it. A lot of people who are clinically depressed are suffering with something in their life. And if you fix the problem in their life, perhaps they won't feel depressed. Anymore. The thousands of people who have emailed me saying, my doctor told me I was clinically depressed and it's a disease that I have got in my brain and I can't be fixed. And I started listening to you and I realized that that's not the case and I can fix my own life. And you're the only person who has ever helped me. Oh, right. I believe feeling depressed mm. is real. I do not believe it's a disease that you catch from the sky and you cannot affect. I believe that no matter what happens, I believe you have control of your own mind and you can fight against it. I believe if you change your circumstances in your life, you may feel different. I'll give you a quick example. I had a guy who emailed me saying he was clinically depressed and he was going to kill himself. I obviously am not a psychiatrist, I'm not a doctor. I told him, because I replied to my emails. I said, have you been to a psychiatrist? He said, yes, I'm clinically depressed. I've been on these pills, this amount of time. I'm on antidepressants, it doesn't work. I said, I don't know what to say to you besides this. And he, he said he lost his girlfriend. That's why I became clinically depressed. I said, listen, go to the gym. Get a six pack first. Once you've got a six pack, email me again. If you still feel like killing yourself, I don't know what else to say to you. I'd say, strong body is a strong mind, go train. He went, he started sending me progress pictures, emailing me him getting in better, better shape, and eventually got a six pack. He's now a professional bodybuilder. And he said, I can't believe I was considering that. I feel so much better, etc. The doctor was telling him he was clinically depressed and couldn't cure it. He started taking control of his own life, and now he felt better. That if somebody has depression of any kind, whether it's clinical, whether it exists or not, whether they feel mm -hmm. depressed or not, whatever, that taking control of their life, taking personal responsibility and working hard is always going to be the positive, best thing they can possibly do for their life going How forward. How positive is around it? Them. Of course, money can't buy happiness. I agree. But money is the third most important thing in the world. First is your relation. First is your health, because you have nothing, you're going to die. Second is your relationships, because you need love and family. That matters the most. But money can buy everything else. So money is the third most important thing. The average people come to me and say, what do I do? I'm just the average guy. And my only answer is stop being the average guy. It's my only answer. You can't just be the average guy anymore. The, the idea from the 1950s that you can just be the normal, average, law-abiding, hard-working citizen and you'll have a good life is gone. Any man out here who goes, I'm just going to work hard, do my bit, and obey the laws, and I'll have a good life. No, you won't. No, you will not. Just doing your job is never going to make you rich because you're just going to be taxed into infinity and you're going to stay broke. So just obeying laws and doing your job now has set you up for, to be a peon and a slave for eternity. You have to get yourself in a position where you're making enough money. You don't know what to talk about, then you don't understand money. So go learn how money works. Go learn how a bank works. Go sit on YouTube for free. You don't just pay 50 grand in four years of a university. Go sit on YouTube and understand money, banking, the, or the real estate market, any of it. Understand the, the last housing price crash, why it happened. Understand mortgage rates and how it's affected by interest rates. Understand it, and then go sit with someone else who understands it and talk about it. People should, even if they haven't got a penny in the world, should be going to these meetings about real estate, about investing, but especially if it's cheap, they should go. Just meet other people who at least have money. Have conversations about money. Talk about it. How are you going to get what you don't talk about? And yes, the cycle of precipitation, right? So a uh, cloud comes, it rains, it falls down to the ground, it, it goes under, under the ground, whatever, goes into a stream, it moves into the stream, goes to the ocean, evaporates again up to a cloud, floats somewhere else, falls down again always moving. That's how money is. People think that money is in these large stagnant pools hidden, hidden in people's bank accounts. That's not really true. Money is constantly moving all the time. And if you can find a way to get in between it and stand in the right place at the right time, you're going to get wet. I think that's the new modern way to view the world. It's an attention economy. It doesn't matter what you do. If you're getting attention, you'll make money. One habit that people need to adopt, and this is a habit I had for a very long time, and I've actually recently cleared it from my brain because I've reached a point where peace of mind is worth more than money. But every single time money is spent, you need to identify how your money was taken from you. And I say taken because money can't be made. Money is taken. Because the only people who can make money are the government. So if you're a government, you can make money. You can print it from thin air or a bank. But if you're a person, you're not making money. You're convincing other people to give it to you. You're taking money from others. 
So every single time you spend money on anything, you need to identify how it was taken from you. When you go and buy a coffee, don't just go buy the coffee and sit down. Sit and say, why did I buy this coffee? Okay, I really want coffee. Yeah, but then why did I go into this store and not that store? Is it fair advertising? Does it have less of a line? Do they have seating? How did they convince me to come in here? How much did this coffee cost? Six quid. What's the profit margin on that? Probably five pound 50, five pound 80 probably by the time. The cup probably costs more than the coffee. The coffee is just water. How did they convince me to spend six pounds in this place? And when you sit there and analyze and you all start to learn little lessons about business, you'll learn about the importance of the signage. You'll learn about the importance of there being no queue. Yeah. So then if you ever run a business, tell you, I say with my business, my people all the time, faster. All the time, quicker. Yeah. It's like I have a couple businesses that are physical. I'm like, I don't want to see a line. I don't want to see empty, so it looks bad. So when there's lines, you work fast. When we're down to one or two people, you take your time, you talk to the customer. Right. Keep it so there's like always one person at the thing. Like manage the line. Like people don't think about this stuff. No one's gonna sit and wait in a long queue. Maybe some idiots will, but people like me won't. We got to do, right? My time's worth money. I'm not gonna stand and wait in a line. So you have to identify how your money is taken from you. If you start doing that with every single time you spend anything ever, you're gonna to start to identify business opportunities and you're gonna sit there and you're gonna have coffee and you're gonna go, you know what? They could have sold cake and they didn't. Could I outcompete this place? Let's imagine I had the money to start a coffee shop right next door. How would I outcompete them? Well, I'd have cake because they don't have cake. Also, most people in here are businessmen and this, the guy serving some dude. No, we need a cute waitress. His ass is fired. We need a chick. Put a chick here, put some cake in. Uh, Financial Times, there's business people in. Think, people don't even think about this stuff. They don't use their brain ever. They don't ever look around and realize how they're spending their money. They don't look around and look at which businesses are successful. They don't look around and pay attention to anything. They don't look at the world and all the things that are happening and how it can benefit them. None of it. They don't look at any of it. They're too busy following the circus. That's why it's clown world. I was walking to school, to college with a couple of my friends and a Ferrari drove past. And I said, bro, you see that? And he goes, yeah, what about it? And I said, doesn't that piss you off? I must have been 16. He goes, why? So this dude has 400 G's for a car, 400 grand. I'm walking four miles to college because my mom hasn't got any car. He has 400 grand. Do you think he works a job? Do you think he's behind a counter somewhere? He knows something about the world that I don't know. And they were like, well, he's, he's rich. I'm like, yeah, I know. I didn't say he wasn't rich, dummy. I'm saying he knows something about the world I don't know. And I was intrigued and it angered me. I couldn't sleep for weeks. I was pissed off. Every time I saw somebody with genuine money, I understood that everything I was being told and taught and, 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 and they were trying to make me believe just simply wasn't true. Mm. I was like, this is, none of these people are getting these things by following the path that the system is trying to make me follow. And everybody intrinsically knows this. If you go to a, if, you, if you're at a BP, you're at a petrol station, and I pull up in my Lamborghini, nobody goes, wow, he went to school. Yeah. He studied hard. And, and they do that because they know that the, mo- the easiest way to amass wealth is to break the rules because the rules are not designed to allow most people, most people to make money. You can make money within the rules, of course you can. But most people don't. Most people who follow the path, work, consume, die. That's it. So I always do the same thing as you and I knew there had to be another way. I knew that just working for money was a paradigm that, that wasn't true. And then you understand making your money work for you and you understand delinking your time from money. Yeah. You start learning to understand these things, but eventually you build a system and you build an ecosystem like me. I have 60 or 70 people work for me, for me all around the world. And things just happen and money just kind of appears as yeah. long as everything's well organized. I mean, in my experience, like imagine if, if I had, didn't have all this money and I had to go get a job again, I'd get a sales job because I've always been a salesman. And uh, I, I think that's a very important life skill to have to be good at sales and to deal with the stress and have a commission only environment. But they don't even, I don't know if they even teach sales in university. Yeah, it's all garbage. They don't, well, teach, they don't teach anything important. They just yeah. teach anything. They teach things that are going to keep you inside the slave mind. And they want you to go to school and then go to college and then go to university and get in debt. And you have to be in debt. So that now you have to work and you're working and you're in debt. And then they want you to take on more debt if possible in the, in the form of a mortgage, which a lot of people do, which we can talk about because I know you're the property guy. And then you're in debt now. And once you're in debt, you can't really quit your job and it's very difficult for you to leave the country. And, and now, they have, now they can hold things up for you. So that's the goal. It's all about control mechanisms and the system is very well designed to make sure that people are uh, conditioned to obey. It's very hard for the average person to say no to anything. Unless you have millions and millions and millions of dollars, it's very difficult to even have an opinion on subjects. That's the thing about being a man. And that's what I was saying to the kids. It's like, look, you need to get up and it's gonna be very, very difficult. The world's getting harder and harder, especially for men. It's all clout, it's all status. 
It's all, it, it, there's no way you're gonna matter unless you get up and you work extremely hard. Should young men aspire to work very hard, have no criminal record, become multimillionaires, protect and provide for the women close to them, uh, be sovereign so they can stand up and have their own points of view in face of cancellation, be able to not be mentally intimidated when they go on national TV and there's traps set up for them. Yeah, I believe that confident, strong men who stand up and protect and provide for women are a good thing for the world and a good force for the world. And I don't think that I put a magic spell on anybody. I think there's a whole bunch of men in the world who understands my value. And if, if men grow up to be like me, you're gonna have a whole bunch of people with no criminal record, dedicated athletes, who protect and provide for the people close to them.